Hello, everybody. I'm Jonathan Coachman, and this is Super Bowl Sunday on EA Sports. Up next, we've got what should be a great matchup between the New England Patriots and the Los Angeles Rams. Kickoff now just moments away. It is finally time to crown a champion as I'll hand it over to the two men who will call the action, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. Alongside my good friend Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We are honored to be here for the biggest spectacle in sports, the Super Bowl. Are you ready, partner? I am more than ready, and I love the word you used, honored, because it is an honor to be here. It's a privilege to be here. My excitement is just about to burst through the booth. I can't wait to do this. Well, in sitting with both of these teams and talking in the meetings and media day and all the hoopla that goes into this, there was one common theme. They're ready to stop the talking and start playing football. Yeah, they were probably ready a while ago. Now they can just focus on it. It's done. The only talking they have to worry about now is post-game, and they hope that they'll be talking as the winning team. And we'll see. You know both sides come in with a game plan to start. We'll see how the adjustments are made throughout because there are always adjustments in this game. I want to see if they come out conservative, trying to minimize errors or if they have enough confidence to attack early and try and take advantage of the other team's nervousness. After Joe Namath and the guarantee, we are underway in Super Bowl 53. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Tom Brady and the Patriots offense getting set for divisional round matchup with the Chargers. But, you know, recently Tom Brady, he said, I'm not only thinking about this year, I have goals to play next year and beyond that. So, look, he threw for 4,000 again this season, seventh time in the last eight years, and he's a bionic man, I guess. I guess so. He has really done a great job of not just taking care of himself. He only had the one season that he had a serious injury. The rest of the time, he knows how to bounce back. Was he say pliability <laughs> leads to availability? Top the 500 touchdown mark, 517 with 29 touchdown passes this year for his career. Brady now on first down. And a first hookup with his all-pro tight end, Rob Gronkowski. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. An excellent way to start the drive there, 18 yards. And I put my first tally mark next to the Brady to Gronk counter here. I think it may be the first of many, because once they get going, look out. Things tend to snowball. Tom Brady trusts Gronk as much as any receiver I think he's thrown to in his career. And it's evident and when you see that. And that's saying something. That's saying something right there. But he's earned it. One play has him up past the 40 already and another first and 10. Wait, 20! 20! Brady now on first down. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Unable to get it to Gronkowski that time. And that'll bring up second down. As the offensive starters pop up on your screen, Charles, let me ask you, Chris Hogan, what does he bring to this offense? A guy that you look at and really don't circle in your game plan. If there's other guys that you look at, then you realize this guy can do damage. Finds his way open on almost every snap. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Watch, 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 watch. 
They'll run it here. This is James White. And he's going to bowl his way forward to the 48. They get six here after the incompletion, and it'll leave them with a third and four. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Now Brady. This is White on the screen. Fancy footwork at the 45. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing on first down is Brady. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. Aaron Donald able to get in there and take him down for a loss of three. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football before he knew it. He was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. So after the sack, they'll come up on a still manageable second and 13. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. That'll be a loss of a yard, and it leads to a third down. I know the scouting report on him is that he doesn't possess the eye discipline to be an elite linebacker. What that means is his ability to read, react, and make a play. But on that one, he looked like one of those guys. So first and second down went in the wrong direction. They'll try to do better here on third and 13. By 20, by 20. By 20. From the gun, it's Brady. They will find his man. That's Hogan complete. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it an eyelash. Dropped it to one. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Now, that play will end up on the highlights, and you'll see it all over the place. But what you won't see, the offensive line that bought the extra time that allowed for the big completion downfield, those guys made that play possible. A chance for the first score of this Super Bowl. Here's first and goal. And they will run it with Michelle. And he is in. Touchdown, New England, with the first touchdown of this Super Bowl. And the Patriots drive right down the field and score on the opening drive. And on the grandest of stages, with the whole world watching the Super Bowl, they come out and get the first points. I don't know how you feel about Brandon, but for me, watching the beginning of the Super Bowl, I've often wondered how come it's not just a fumble fest? How come the ball's not all over the place? The nerves, the interim in between of the two weeks waiting for the game. But this team came out and handled it just like it was a regular season walk in the park. Terrific start. Extra point good by Gaskowski. And it's now a 7-0 game. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run.
Koskowski now out to kick it away. This fielded at the two. And a pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Rams coming onto the field led by Jared Goff. And Goff this year developing into a top-tier quarterback. Close to 4,700 yards passing, 32 touchdown passes. The question now, what will they do in the playoffs against the Cowboys? And they got the playoff experience last year against Atlanta. It wasn't the most positive but it's something that they could build off of. Got beat at home, even though they were the favored team. But I think it allowed them to weather their little bit of a dip during the regular season this year. And the last couple of games, Jared Goff was back being the guy that you described. Tough in the pocket, able to make the throws downfield. And this Rams offense, they're hard to handle when they're on top of their game. Goff will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at their own 24. They go play action with Gurley. Now gone. Blitz coming and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. the sack it's second and 19 and the road gets a bit tougher from here from the gun here's gone it's incomplete took a shot couldn't connect Robert Woods the intended receiver that time and it's third down and the buffet boys the O-line hopefully they're ready today listen you got to feed them first but if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. Here we go. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Out of the gun. Gone. Incomplete. Both players were there offensively and defensively, but it falls incomplete. And third down is a key down in any game you play. And third down defense, something we've got to watch in this one. Got to be effective on the passing downs. That's a pretty good first step right there. So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. Back deep for New England, Julian Edelman. The shifty Edelman with a good move. Give him 11 yards that time on the return. And the Patriots take over. So out now comes the offense back onto the field. They'll be looking to duplicate that first drive, the one that got them that 7 0 lead. Of course they would. I mean, look, they're on the road. So getting the 7 0 lead was huge for them, right? Imagine getting up two touchdowns on the road, taking the crowd out of the game. It'd be ideal. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at the 41 yard line. Wait, 20. Now a play fake, Brady. Almost able to intercept it. That's one he would have liked to have held on to on this first drive. Instead, second down. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Here now is second and 10, again from the 41. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! They fake the handoff. Now Brady. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Gronkowski, the intended target, and it's third down. They're bringing a lot of pressure here already in the first quarter. Already sacked him once. Now they get in there and knock another one away. 
You think maybe that tuck rule being gone makes defenses a lot bolder? Yes, indeed. That time, lucky that the arm was going forward, incomplete pass. Now they face a third and ten Wait. after back-to-back -back incompletions. Wait, we got... Working from the gun, it's Brady. And he can't hang on to it. Nearly picked. He's known for his hands defensively. But instead, it just brings up fourth down. Not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. On fourth down on now is the lefty Ryan Allen to punt. And a great job on special teams to down it as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. Well, before the Rams take their next snap, Charles, let's preview that game that they have coming up with the Cowboys. You talked about what they can do on offense. They're obviously going to have to shut down Dak, Zeke, and that Cowboys offense with their defense and Aaron Donald. And I think that Aaron Donald and Dominican Sue is running made a defensive tackle. They have to make sure they play down and distance each time. And what I mean by that is these guys are great pass rushers. And a lot of times when you're a great pass rusher, you want to rush the pass run every down. <laughs> they have to play the run first because that's what the Cowboys are going to throw out on with Zeke. If they can slow down the run, stuff the run, they'll earn the right to be pass rushers and get after Dak Prescott in the pocket. Here's the first carry now for Todd Gurley. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Lawrence Guy able to bring him down. And quickly, let's check out the New England defense. Dante Hightower is a prototypical run-stuffing inside linebacker who has the ability to go to the edge and rush the passer. And there's no better example than when he had the strip sack against Matt Ryan in Super Bowl 51. Second down, here's Goff. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he's able to get this one all the way past the 30. A good pick up there, a 22. I know most of the time when the ball's in the air, you're thinking wide receiver, tight end, but running backs, they can be a big part of any passing offense nowadays. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. On first down, it's Gurley. To the 40 and no further. The razzle-dazzle, though, got him a couple extra on the play. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. A nice run here early on. It doesn't take a great play call to realize you want to establish a guy of his caliber with runs like this early because they'll pay dividends as the game progresses. Second down, this is Gurley. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. Not too many more ideal situations in second and two in order to try and pick up a first down. They ran it and picked it up.
Now Goff will hand this one to Gurley. And very little daylight there. He'll get a couple up to the 44. One thing to keep in mind, partner, especially in the second half, when you've got a running back of this size, of these dimensions, I can just tell you, attrition does set in for a defense because you're excited about hitting him in the first half. Maybe not so much in the second half, and some of these shorter gains turn into bigger runs later. Now a carry, it's C.J. Anderson. And that play going absolutely nowhere as he's belted before he could get out of the backfield. It'll go as a loss of a yard, and it'll set up third down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. A shotgun snap for Goff. He's going to air it out deep for Woods. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Robert Woods, 57 yards. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And that was really just a great battle for that football on both sides. The result is a touchdown. Ordinarily, I'd like to say it was a win-win, but it really wasn't because the defender, while he was there with excellent coverage, he didn't get the benefit, did he? But he's not going to get chewed up in film session. No, he was right there. They'll tell him, okay, of course you need to knock the ball away, but they won't be too upset with him. He did his job for the most part. Zerline good with a PAT, and we are tied at seven. So that drives seven plays in length. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. On the return, here's the dangerous Cordero Patterson. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. All right, as the Patriots come back out here, take me to school on their upcoming round two game against the L.A. Chargers. How does this one shake down? Hey, you and I are in the same classroom. We're both sitting right up front trying to get schooled on this ourselves. But I think the Chargers coming in hot, feeling good about their victory on the road in Baltimore. Remember, they won 12 games in the regular season. Beat the number one seed, Kansas City, on their home field. They're very confident, led by Phillip Rivers. But New England, getting that week off by being the number two seed, and the Chargers going to their place. A lot of people are going to rely on New England's experience and history to carry them home through a victory. I think the Chargers are coming awfully hot. I wouldn't be surprised at all to see the Chargers pull this off. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll scratch out only about a yard up to the 32. Sometimes your philosophies get challenged at times you don't want them to. They did try to stick to the running game on the first two plays. Didn't amount to much. And now facing a third and long at the outset of this drive. New England on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This is third and eight. Shotgun now for Brady. Toward the sideline. Did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge. And that's good enough for a first down. It's the first time that they've looked his way tonight, and he comes up with a first down on the play. 
And that's how you pick up a first down. Not only does he make the catch, but has enough body control to get his feet down inbounds, toe-tapping and dragging to make sure he gets it done. Now a first down carry, it's Michelle. And he'll get this into enemy territory, but not by much as he's down to the 48. The tackle there by Mark Barron. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. On second down, Michelle. And an alley to run. And he's got this down to the 35. That'll be a New England first down, a gain of 12. At this stage of the game, the run pass numbers are a little bit out of whack because most of the yardage has come through the air. But in a sense, that just sets things up for big runs like that because the defense might be a little bit off balance. They pick up another first down with that run. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. Wait, 20! 20! The give, this is Michelle. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and 11. Anytime you call an inside running play, you just know there should be a lot of congestion there. You're counting on your offensive line to take control of the line of scrimmage. That didn't happen in this case, and that play got bottled up. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! On the handoff, it's Michelle. And a solid run down inside the 30. Eight yards there on the carry, and now they're left with a much more manageable third and three. But you've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. New England on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This time it's third and three. Wait, 20! Operating from the gun, Brady, and able to find Dorsett. The Patriot passing game is rolling. They've got another first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. Into the red zone, it's Brady. And that's caught by Gronk for a Pats touchdown. Rob Gronkowski from 13 yards out. And the Pats able to cash in for six. And the defensive there, that was a battle. He just made a really nice play. A really nice play, making sure his body position was correct. And how about the throw? Zipped it in there. And it results in the touchdown. The point after try for Goskowski. Goskowski the extra point, and that makes the score 14 to seven. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all, and it's finished off by a Pats touchdown.
Goskowski now out to kick it away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he's going to be taken down on what will be the final play of this first quarter. So one quarter down here in the Super Bowl. 14-7 is the score. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Back here with Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon. We've had the kickoff to begin the first quarter. Now it's time for the second quarter kickoff. And they've got it here with a first down. They'll start out on the ground with Gurley. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. Tremendous blocking by the interior of the offensive line. They didn't just gash him there. They blasted a gaping hole for him to gallop through. And if he comes back to the huddle, he better be giving them a whole lot of credit and thanking them for that much space to rumble. down it's gone that's caught by his tight end Gerald Everett and that goes for a gain of 31 there will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield but when you can pick it up in big chunks and strike like that have explosive plays that's often the difference in winning and losing those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance that'll drive a team towards a victory So now then, the big play has him all the way inside the 30 now, first and 10. Goff turns and gives to Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. And give him four yards there, it'll be second and six. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest gain, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. To throw on second down is gone. Oh, the rookie nearly had the pick. Probably should have had it. Third down now. Before the game, they were running the route tree about as efficiently and effectively as we could have possibly imagined, but sometimes the passes just go awry. Yeah, let's face it. When you're running the route tree in pregame, you don't have defenders breathing down your neck. You don't have defensive backs making plays on the football. Hard to replicate the intensity of the game in pregame. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Goff now looking to throw. This is caught. It's Cooks. And able to get him down, but he does reach the five. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Some think the teams really won't throw a slant route unless you have a receiver who has a lot of stature to him. But sometimes the little guys, they get lost in there. People can't really locate them, and they run that quick cut on the slant, and oftentimes they can turn it into big plays. This will be the first red zone opportunity now for the Rams. They've got it first and goal at the six. They'll run. Anderson. And this is going to result in losing yardage. They're driven back to the eight-yard line. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards.
It's second and goal back to the eight yard line now. He'll get it up the middle. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. It'll go as no gain on the play, and now they're looking at a third and goal. So stuff for no gain on second down brings up a pretty interesting third from this distance. I'm throwing the ball, and I'm not even thinking about play pass. I'm going to let them know right away I'm throwing it, but I'm probably giving my quarterback some room, sprint him out to one side or the other, and give him an opportunity. If it breaks down, he can take off and run for it. And he'll get into the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. As his guys are in for six. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. And that score and the point after will knock this ball game up. And when you're playing from behind, all you want to do is get back to even and, in a sense, start over again. That's exactly what they were able to accomplish. Now Zerline on to add the extra point. Zerline connects on the extra point. And we've got a tie game here in a back and forth first half. So that drive in total eight plays. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. So we're right back where we started. All even as the kick's away. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Out comes the New England offense to see what they can do this time. And Charles, the way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing, it's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe we're sitting in a nice royal box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. Brady and the Patriots now, first and 10, right at the 30. This drive starts out on the ground with Michelle, and yeah, nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there, second down. So if you've been playing defense in this one, there's a little bit of the good. And some bad, because they did give up the touchdown run to him earlier, but shut it down otherwise. Outside of that, you're exactly right. I would say they've contained him very well. Now Brady throwing on second down. Being chased out left. And he's able to get out to the 32, brought down there. It's just a gain of a couple there on the scramble, and now it's third down. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. New England on third down. They've been near perfect. Four for five at this point. This is third and eight. From the gun, Brady. Over the middle, that's caught by Hogan. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. They convert on third with a gain of 22. and 10. Here's Brady. Now they set up the screen. That's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 45-yard line. 
A good convergence there defensively. Only a yard, and it's second down. So many things have to come together just right for a screen pass to break for big yardage. The blocking, the timing of the pass to the runner, everything has to fit together just right. But on that play, the defense was able to disrupt things and hold it to a short game. got a yard out of that last completion and that makes this second and nine yeah. operating from the gun Brady and he hits Gronkowski on the out round Brady to Gronkowski cover athlete to cover athlete for a Patriot first down like so many tight ends nowadays they have no problem at all putting him in the slot and letting him go to work and that's a nice pitch and catch right there for a first down From the 32 now, here's first and 10. 220, They go play action here on first down. Looking middle, it's caught by Gronkowski. 11 more on that one and another first down. Ah, yes, Brady to Gronk. You think these two are in sync? Without a doubt, and look, they both understand what they can do for each other. Gronk knows if he gets open, the ball's going to be there. And Tom Brady knows what a great security blanket Gronk is. When all else fails, he find big 87. Brady's got his guys first and 10, and he's four for four now, throwing the ball to start the drive. Wait, 20! They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll at least get him inside the red zone here, down to about the 19. A gain of three, second down. Well, they certainly had success throwing the ball on this drive, and not as much running it as we just saw once again on that last play, stopped after a very short gain. But I wouldn't abandon the run totally, because otherwise, pass rushers just tee off on your quarterback. It makes it very, very difficult for him in that situation. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. It's a really nice 15-yard pickup, and now it's first and goal. We don't talk about it very often, but sometimes there's a dip in intensity when you start the second half, which can manifest itself in some sloppy tackling. And how about right there? He ran right through that weak tackle attempt. successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. Goskowski with the extra point, and the lead is now 21-14. That time, a nine-play drive, and it ends with a New England touchdown. Koski now out to kick it away. This is taken at the three. 
Solid return. Pretty good field position. They'll start at the 32-yard line. The Rams offense now making their way out to take over. And they had to wait a long time to get the football back. Probably not what you were hoping for when you got an offense that's humming. Agreed. What you were looking for is the defense get the ball back pretty quickly, right? Hoping for a three and out. So that didn't happen. You can't yell at your D for that. They've got to take care of their own business and reestablish themselves now that they're back on the field. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at about the 32. They'll try and start the drive with Gurley. Trying to turn the corner, but he's going to be stopped right near the line of scrimmage. Deron Harmon makes the tackle. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. And trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. A play fake to Gurley. Now gone. He's going to air one out. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion, kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. The Rams on third down. They've been good, three for four thus far. This is third and 10. Here's gone. They'll throw underneath for Gurley. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. They'll get a couple yards on that one. And that'll bring up fourth down. Instead of throwing it downfield, Charles, they just tried to dump it underneath there. Do you like the call? I do. I think it's a high percentage play because you get the completion. And what you're counting on is your back to use his legs and his elusiveness to make people miss and pick up the first down. In this case, it didn't happen. Here's Johnny Hacker now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. Getting set to go again here on offense, Jared Goff trots back onto the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Throwing now is Brady. Toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Gronkowski, the intended target, and now it's second down. What an exciting week with a divisional round coming up on the NFC side of things, Charles. Dallas at L.A., the Rams, Philadelphia at New Orleans. What do you think? Well, I can't wait because Dallas at the Los Angeles Rams, the Rams feel like they've gotten their mojo back down the stretch on offense. Dallas feels like they can pound and bruise against anyone with Ezekiel Elliott carrying the load. That's going to be a marquee game. And how about Philadelphia and New Orleans, the defending Super Bowl champs. Here comes Nick Foles again. New Orleans, the number one seed at home. They don't lose at home in the Drew Brees, Sean Payton era in the playoffs. This is going to be fun. Remember, they played earlier this year, and New Orleans wiped out Philadelphia. And you'll be calling that game. Enjoy it, partner. Can't wait. From the gun on third down, Brady. Over the middle, Dorsett. And he gets it to the 34, good enough for the first. It goes as a gain of eight, and it moves the chains. I think it all came together there. In-breaking route, drove it with excellent pace. Money throw right there to move the sticks. Now, 
12 of 17 through the air as he leads his guys up on first down. Throwing on first down is Brady. Under a heavy rush, and down he goes. Mark Barron coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. Now, we talk about players blitzing all the time. I often laugh and sometimes call it just straight-ahead pursuit. What a running start right back to the backfield for him. Yeah, it really didn't give anybody a chance to get up there and stop him. No, I mean, that's really, really difficult. You're asking a whole lot anyway, but when he gets that kind of a start and comes through clean, Oftentimes, the advantage definitely goes to the defensive player. Now, following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. On the ground, this is Michelle. And room to run as he's up past the 35-yard line. Nine yards on the pickup that time, so he got more than half of it back, but it's still a third and eight. A reminder, coming up at intermission, we'll get highlights of this Super Bowl from Jonathan Coachman of the crew in Orlando for our EA Sports Halftime Report. New England on third down. They've been excellent. Six for seven. This is third and eight. From the gun, it's Brady. Looking for Gronkowski, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Mikel Roby Coleman, and they'll set up shop right near midfield at the 49-yard line. He was looking for Gronk that time. Ah, Brandon, this is a veteran quarterback back there. He should know better than to make a throw like this. This is definitely not his best ball, and I think he knew this was trouble the second it was leaving his hand. now coming out on the field and hoping to do better than they did their last possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys. Win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down. And guess what? You start accumulating first downs. And that's what they need in order to not pump the ball again. Reception. Here's Gong. Looking right sideline, but it's incomplete. He was looking for Todd Gurley, and it's second down. It certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Now gone. It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. That one good for the completion percentage, but no gain. It'll be third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the gun, here's gone. That's caught inside the 20. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. That one will go down as 33 yards on the third down conversion. You know I'm going to lean towards the defender, right? You know I'm going to do that. I know. That's a tough situation for him as I see it. But the truth of the matter is, that ball was not streaking towards him. That little arc on it, he's got to find a way to get his head around and make a play on the football. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. From the red zone now, golf. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. He was in search of his tight end, Tyler Higby. That'll bring up second down. Well, too much oomph, too much mustard there on that pass. Yeah, really turned it loose, didn't he? Really cut loose with that one. Sharp, strong, 
Didn't lead to a completion, though. Made it very difficult. Second and ten. Golf again. And it's complete. He's got him in the end zone. Touchdown, Rams. In for the score. And the Rams are an extra point away from tying up this football game. These two teams in this first half, it's been fun. Back and forth, back and forth. Well, it's not fun for the defensive coordinators, <laughs> but offensive coordinators are enjoying it. Yeah, they're having streaks here, aren't they? Being able to put scores together and, and really bunch them up, and we have a tight game here. You know, we often talk about having the right shoes for the right turf. Today is track shoes, because that's what we've seen <laughs> with these offenses. Yeah, it's been an absolute track meet so far, and fun to watch. look that's what the technology is for and this touchdown will count Zerline now for the PAT Zerline good with a PAT and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime so that drive spanned five plays and it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles So a tie ball game here as the kick's away. Now it's Patterson. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Tom Brady leads the offense out for their next possession. And it was his interception on the last drive that wound up leading to a game-tying touchdown. And somehow... You can make this a positive, though. You know why? Game tied now. So you're not protecting the lead. So you're not playing that way. You've got to go get the lead again. So maybe it loosens him up a little bit and allows him to go ahead and be a little more free in his play. Wait, 20! Try to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And right side caught Hogan. Now whistles come in. We're going to get a timeout here by the offense as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. So the offense takes the timeout, and they are back out and ready to rock. Brady now closing in on a 200-yard first half through the air. It's first and 10. Working from the gun, it's Brady. And time finally runs out. He can't get rid of the football. He's taken down. A oh, free safety blitz, that can be a gamble, but it proves fruitful there. Yeah, you're exactly right about the gamble because oftentimes the free safety is the last line of defense against a long pass. And when he comes at the quarterback, he'd better get home and make the play. Otherwise, a big play could result for the offense. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. The final shot before half for Brady. And he's got Edelman for the first time. That's complete. 
And he's going to get this down to the 35-yard line. So we've come upon halftime in the big one, the Super Bowl. As we send you down to Orlando, where Jonathan Coachman has our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. What a season this has been. Hard to believe it ends tonight. As we'll get back to you guys for the second half of this Super Bowl in just a moment. It's been a tremendous season of football, but it's not over yet. One half remains to decide who will stand on the podium with the Vince Lombardi Trophy. And to call the second half, here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. The halftime show, quite a spectacle, but it's back to football for the second half of Super Bowl 53. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. So now here are the Rams as their offense comes back out. First half showed us some pretty good offense. Tie game. We'll see what the second half brings. And it'll be interesting because I think both sides feel pretty good about what their offenses are doing. Got to wonder what adjustments are being made defensively to try and get a spark and maybe slow down the other side. But here, do you change up anything on this opening drive? Not offensively, you don't. You've got everything going your way. You've probably prepared for maybe some change-ups you might expect, but overall, you like what your game plan's showing you. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10, right at the 30. They go play action with Gurley. Now Golf. Wide open receiver complete. A very solid gain of 27. There are so many things to watch for when you play defense. And reading your keys, you always hear about that, and having your eyes in the right place. Sometimes your eyes can fool you. How about that play action there? That sprang the big guy, didn't it? Able to dump it over the top to him. Goff now, 10 of 16, throwing the football. It's first and 10. On the handoff, it's Gurley. Good move by Gurley. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. That good for 19 of the first down. A good run there off right tackle in an old school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. He manages seven yards down to the 17. Well, no matter how they phrase it, staying on schedule, staying ahead of the sticks, whatever you want to call it, seven yards on first down, that fits the bill. Goff gives to Gurley. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the 9. Seven yards on the pick up there, and now they've got it first and goal. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral, 
also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other bats in the league. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. Looking to find a lane, but he can't rein in at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. Partner, when it's a goal-to-go situation, if you're on the field on defense, you have to know that you may be called on to make a tackle at any time. Here, the cornerback does exactly that. Plays the run really well and makes a big play. They'll try the air now with Gall. A dump off for Davis. Five yards that time on the completion. And now it's third and goal. Three down. Three down. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers, tight ends, because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. The Rams on third down. They've converted four times out of six. Not bad. They're looking at a third and goal here. Golf. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Kyle Van Noy in there to get him for a loss of nine. And that'll lead to fourth down. They've been moving the ball well offensively, really getting into a groove. Last play, pass completion. Now, finally, the defense gets there. And you have to find a way to disrupt their rhythm. Do you do it with coverage, or do you do it with pressure? They elected to go with pressure, and it was the right call. So on fourth down, here comes Greg Zerline to try and get three for the Rams. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will break our tie and give them a three-point lead. So the drive stalls out inside the 15-yard line, but they do get three. And I've talked with enough players nowadays that when they have these types of kicks, that no one says to their guy, hey, that's just like making an extra point, piece of cake. Because the extra point is not a piece of cake anymore. <laughs> but kicking a field goal from that distance, just give him confidence and let him knock it through. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Fielded about a yard deep. He'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. So here are the Patriots now. They get ready for their first possession of half number two. They trail offense, first time to touch the ball in quarter three, and we'll see what they can do. And I can't wait to see what they have planned because some teams script to start a half. Other teams just go, okay, these are the sequence of plays we want to run. These things worked well for us. And sometimes they throw in that big chunk play right mm -hmm. away. Uh, shocker. Try and get after them early and try and create a big play to give themselves some momentum. Let's see what they have up their sleeve. On first down, Brady. Caught on the right side by Dorsen. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of, until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and go, they keep making the connection. So second in inches after that first down completion went just shy of the marker. Wait, 20! They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. Only a gain of a yard there, but it indeed gets him a new set of downs. Second and inches is oftentimes an invitation for an offense coordinator to take a big shot downfield because he feels like he can come back on third down and pick up the first down. But sometimes you just don't want to break tendency. Stay with what you are, stay with who you know, and go get the first down. That's exactly what they did. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. Hey, 
Now a play fake here on first down. Looking deep downfield. And he fires one that's intercepted. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And he'll take it across midfield to the 46-yard line. When we talk about Akeem Tlaib, technique is not the word that comes to mind, but don't worry about that. This guy anticipates as well as anyone in the league, and he did just that, picking off another pass. field here comes Los Angeles and they had three points last time but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown we'll see if they can do better now I'm with you on that one let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing the only one happy about the three point the kicker exactly <laughs> you put it through the post that's going to help him in contract time but that offense they're thinking let's get in the end zone this time I don't know if that helped him in contract time you, you could have kicked that one through I don't know about that <laughs> <Toe -bashed. laughs> I don't know about that it. <laughs> super tall <laughs> Time to establish the run game here. Gurley. And he's going to be met at about the 43. Three yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. They give them 13 yards there on the play and a fresh set of downs. They're trying to show that they can run the ball, protect this lead, give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So on the heels of the run by Todd Gurley, another first and 10. Now a handoff for Gurley. And he is met at the line of scrimmage, and he goes down right there. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. Tackle made at the line, so they're converging well on the football now. Back-to-back -back stops make it third and ten. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just started in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. Big play coming up. Here's third and ten. I would expect to see some pressure here. The pressure drops off as they'll look to throw. They got him in, it's Woods. And down inside the 15, shy of the 10. He had the touchdown earlier. This one's going to get him a first down. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot and they connected there and picked up a first down. Now golf on first down. Oh, he had six points in his hands there. Couldn't hang on. Second down. Let's give this defense some credit now. They let the guys get downfield. But when push came to shove, they stood their ground. And now they'll likely force a field goal attempt. Right. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. A shotgun snap for goal. 
And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's the one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. The Rams on third down. They've had good success, five for eight to this point. This is third and ten. Cut! By 20! Cut! Go off throwing again. And he takes a shot on the release, as this will be incomplete. Well, after watching him ring the bell that many times and putting the ball in the end zone, throwing it, you had to figure they had to bring some type of pressure. They had to change things up on defense. And able to get to him, put him on the ground, so maybe just something to throw him off a little bit. Yeah, that had to feel a lot better for the defensive guys. They've been getting carved up in this one. To finally knock him on the ground and force an incompletion, that's got to be a sigh of relief. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will add three more to their lead. It pushes it up to six. So they've put together a good little drive there, but ultimately stalling out in the red zone. Yeah, I know a lot of people look at it as a little bit of a negative. They didn't get six points out of it, right? Didn't get the touchdown. But that's actually okay. They got three points. It will give their defense a little bit of rest, let them settle down over there. So all in all to me, that's a good drive. the made field goal Zerline back out there now to send this one away now it's Patterson and he'll take this across the 25 couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line here comes Tom Brady and the Patriot offense back onto the field. And he comes out on the heels of an interception he threw last time they had the ball. Yeah, and you know, the quarterbacks that I know that are the best ones, the ones that really know how to lead their team, they tell them, that's on me. That's my bad. But let's go back out there and move ahead again, guys. We can get this done. One good thing for him, it did only lead to three points and not a touchdown after that turnover. Big thanks to the defense. Brady and the Patriots now first and ten at their own 27. Wait, 20! Wait, 20! Wait, we got! They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Now that we sit in the postseason, let's talk about some of these awards we've been hitting on all year, Charles. MVP, what do you think? Well, I think it's going to come down to Patrick Mahomes, the quarterback at Kansas City, Drew Brees, quarterback New Orleans, and Aaron Donald, the defensive tackle for Los Angeles Rams. I ultimately think that Mahomes wins this award. I think he distanced himself late in the season from Breeze. That's hard for a defender to win the MVP. Rookie of the year, Barkley, or does Mayfield have a shot? Personally, I would give it to Barkley because he's been there all 16, but Mayfield made Cleveland relevant, put them in a position where maybe we were even talking about the playoffs, and boy, the excitement level has really ramped up. I would not be surprised at all if he walked away with the award. Lastly, what about Coach of the Year? Does Frank Reich have a shot after starting 1-5 and five in Indy? He should be in that conversation, shouldn't he? But I think ultimately it comes down to Matt Nagy in Chicago and Anthony Lynn with the Los Angeles Chargers. I think Nagy's going to win it because the Chargers were picked in preseason to actually win their division or contend. The Bears were not. Brady finding Hogan on third down of the Patriots, able to convert. so well you almost forget that someone has to carry the ball to gain the yardage the leverage by the offensive line to create space up front really well done
They'll run it now, out of the gun. And good penetration here. He'll get this down only to about the 49-yard line. There to make the tackle, Samson Abuka. What a luxury to have a guy like this who can not only spell your starter, but can come in and keep drives going. New England on third down. Can't fault these numbers. Seven for nine thus far. This time they face a third and two. They stay on the ground with White. And he'll be brought down, but a tip of the cap on the spin move as that gives him a first down. It's a nine-yard gain, and it keeps the drive moving. I don't know about you, but that almost felt like old-time football there. Third and two is not necessarily just a running down anymore. A lot of times they want to throw the ball. They went back to the roots and powered forward and got the first down. This is Michelle, and he only manages a couple here down to about the 38-yard line. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Six yards on the pickup, and they're going to face a third down. Kid had a ton of success here so far, but you get the feeling that he might be on the verge of popping one? Yeah, even on that one, there was a little bit of a hole, but it closed there quickly at the end. New England on third down. They've been tough to stop. Eight for ten so far. Here it's third and two. They keep it on the ground, White again. And he's able to pick up the first down here before he goes down at the 26. It's a seven-yard gain there, and it's good enough to move the chains. Yeah, once more, strong running. Excellent blocking at the point of attack. Look at a nice little drive brewing right here. on this drive so far. It's first and 10. By 20! Line 80! One quarter remains here in the Super Bowl. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now here on EA Sports. It's Patriot football, but they trail here as we begin the fourth quarter. extraordinary let's just face it this offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush it's been demonstrated time and time again pass protection has been a problem all night long as they come up facing second and a bundle by 20 by 20 Shotgun now for Brady. Quickly to Gronkowski. That's caught. And he gets it down to the 32. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, 
You're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Operating from the gun, Brady. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Let's face it, you can run the route tree as many times as you want, get in sync, practice it, do all those things. But once you get to game speed, it doesn't always time up quite that well. That one goes incomplete. And Goskowski's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. So with that field goal, this one's now back within a field goal. Maybe not the ultimate result they wanted, but gets them that much closer. This game is unfolding like a really good book, isn't it? Because I feel like there's a few more plot twists yet to be revealed before this one is over. Koskowski now converted for three. Now he'll kick this one away. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. And a good effort on the return there. Gets him across the 30 to the 33-yard line. And now out on the field, here comes Los Angeles. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three and, points is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Golf will lead the Rams up here first and 10 at the 33-yard line. Now it's Gurley, and an alley to run. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. Just what you want on a first down run, call it eight yards, and it's second and two. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run, got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. So up through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. Yet another carry here tonight for Gurley. And oh, a little spin cycle. Room to win now. And he'll be corralled out across midfield down to the 45. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. Well, that looked like an example of what you said back in the first half. A running back of his size can really wear down a defense. I think he's starting to do that. I think you're exactly right. And know what else he's doing? He's inspiring the rest of his team because they see this starting to happen as well. So that means they're going to redouble their efforts to help him out. Extra blocking, getting downfield, helping him out. Back to back good plays. Have him on the move on first down. Now, Gurley. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. But a nice little gain. Give him 10 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up a second in just about a few inches here. Now I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. Set. 
Here's Gurley. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. First down, here's the run with Anderson. A pretty nice, strong run, but can't break away. Down just inside the 30. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 12 yards there as they move the chains. How about this offensive line? They're really starting to establish themselves, take over this game. And before the series began, I know exactly what was said in the defensive huddle. Guys, we got to get no less than a three and out. Let's get off the field. Instead, they can't find any traction towards doing that. Right now, they're just getting muscled all over the field and getting pushed down it. All runs on this drive so far. It's first and ten. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And he'll get him inside the 15 down to the 14-yard line. Just a yard on the catch there. It'll be second and nine. And, partner, I think that was a great example that not all tight ends are created equal because everything was right. Got the completion, but he's not one of the more dynamic guys in the league. So even though he caught it, couldn't turn it into much more. They only got a yard out of that last completion, and that makes this second and nine. To throw is gone. Looking sideline incomplete. Robert Woods, former USC man, the intended target. And now it's third down. Had the right idea there, trying to throw it to the sideline, but he led him just a little bit too much, trying to get it out to his receiver. Ends up falling to the ground incomplete. The Rams on third down, five out of nine thus far. This is third and nine. Out of the gun, gone. Right side complete, that's Woods. And now they're inside the 10 as he's brought down at the nine. Just a five yard pickup and it leads to fourth down. They didn't get the first down, but I have to say I do like the call. I like what they were trying to do. Try and hit your receiver on the run and see if he can pick it up. Keep it on his feet, get a little rack yardage. Yeah, but a nice job defensively to get to him and keep him short of the first. And Zerline's kick is good. And that will double their lead as it's up to six. So they get the three, but you wonder now, is that going to be enough? Excellent question, because when I look at the smiles on that side of the field, they're a little tight, aren't they? If they had scored a touchdown there, those would be big half-moon grins right now because <laughs> they feel a whole lot better about their position. Uh, and a touchdown in the other direction, all of a sudden they're down. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. Now it's Patterson. And he'll get it up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. 
And now out come the Patriots. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want to end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it. Way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that <laughs> weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive in with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. So Brady and the Pats take over first and 10 at their own 22. Throwing on first down is Brady. This is White on the screen. Right, he'll be dropped at the 30. And a shifty move got him a couple extra on the play. A good pick up there on first as the screen pass gets him eight. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass, looked like it was coming together, looked like there was an opening. Still, ended up with a solid game. Facing a second and two after that last catch, good for eight yards. By 20, blue 20, nice way back. On the ground is Michelle, and not much of an opening there as he's only going to get this to about the 32. Dante Fowler in on the stop. We know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. On third down, it's White, and he gets it to the 32. Good enough for a first down. He needed a yard, that's what he got, and it's going to earn him a new set of downs. Brandon, what were they thinking on defense there? That looked like they were playing for the pass. That was third and short. Yeah, it was an easy pickup because they handed it to him. That was way too easy. Just looked like absolute confusion defensively. Not sure why they were in that set. Yeah, I'd say you ought to have a few men in the box there. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. Wait 20, wait 20. Go, go. On first and 10, here's Brady. He's gonna air it out deep for Hope. And Brady gonna be intercepted a third time. Picked off by Akeem Tlaib. And they're gonna set up shop at the 32-yard line. So that right there was his second pick, but keep in mind, this is a guy who once had a rare three-interception game in his career. So what are you saying, that getting two in a game is like kid stuff for him? That's nothing. He's already Amateur done that, hour. right? Been there, done that. You know he wants a third again. Jared Goff and the Rams headed back onto the field. So, Charles, there are the numbers. What's happened here? Defensive adjustments that's caused him to sort of fall off a bit? I think so. That has to happen. You've got to make some changes because in the first half, they were pretty effective. But the second part is sometimes when you're doing really well, you get off your game a little bit. You get off the gas a little. You're like, okay, we've got this thing. And that's not necessarily the case. Maybe right now, someone just needs to tell a joke in the huddle, loosen things up, and get their big guy going again. On first down, it's Gurley. And able to use his blockers to get this up over the 40. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it, and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. Here's Goff now on second down. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he'll get it out a couple yards shy of midfield at the 48. First down, L.A., Goff finding Higby. That's a staple of this offense, drag route to the tight end. Yeah, he's unable to use his size to break off much more yardage after the catch, but still an effective gain nonetheless. Here comes a 20th carry for Gurley. Room to run inside the 40. And he'll be taken down at the 26. 
A big hitter there, a first down gain of 26 yards. Well, it is our business to analyze what we saw out there, and on that play, I saw a defense staying in base, not taking a chance, not blitzing in a situation where they absolutely need the football back. That's either a case of overthinking it or not thinking it through. If you do blitz, do you have to be careful about where you're coming from, or are you just coming from all angles? You have to be careful about where you're coming from, obviously, but at this stage, you have to take a few chances as well. So into Pat's territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 26-yard line. Now it's gone. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. 11 more yards that go around, a first down as well. Defensively, they're okay with that. Short little round, tackle him inbounds. Okay. All right, cliche alert. It's time for someone to make a play because they've got to have something bigger downfield. They can't just take what they give them. They've got to force it and make something big happen for them. Handoff comes to Anderson, and he stopped immediately there. Call it no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to throw up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. to the ground, this time with Gurley. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Time for a break. We're back to perhaps crown a champion after this. So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Now this is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. On third down, they'll run it with Gurley. And he'll take this one inside the 10 down to the 8. So fresh out of the two-minute warning, and here's another timeout taken with 1.55 remaining. And now following that timeout, the defense back out onto the field. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to make it a two-score game. And Zerline's kick is good. And the drive will wind up yielding three. A big one there. That gives him a little cushion and makes it a two-score game. Yeah, let a little time off the clock, put some points on the board. It's not totally out of reach yet, but it has to feel pretty good to them right now because as a defender, you go out on the field and say, guess what? You can put some points on the board, but that won't beat us. After the made field goal, Zerline back out there now to send this one away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this up past the 20 and down at the 22-yard line. Now the Patriots offense, they work their way back out onto the field. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no? You just throw that out the window. 
I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack him here. Now flags come in. Looked like one of the Patriots might have moved. False start, offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. Still first down. The false start backs him up five, first and 15. Back to throw, Brady. Over the middle, Dorsett. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. Now the Patriots moving quickly, hustling up to the line. Now Brady. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. That's caught inside the 20. A big play there for New England. 63 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be taken down here at about the 11. Michael Brockers in on the stop. And we've reached the one-minute mark in this game. Now Brady. And this is caught. It's Edelman. And he'll get this down inside the five to the four before he's out of bounds. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. The Rams go nickel here defensively on third. Brady to throw. Oh, it's a touchdown if he holds on. Instead, it's fourth down. Brandon, some of those windows that throw the football that exist when you're between the 20s, they don't exist when you're this close to the goal line. But as a former DB, I liked it closer to the goal line. Tighter windows made it easier to cover people, actually. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This to get it back to a one-score game. And Goskowski's kick is good. And high fives for that one as that drive ends in three. A good drive gets them inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that was the old bend but don't break approach. Made sure they contained them when they absolutely had to and forced the field goal attempt that went through. So still a little over 40 seconds to go. Time enough to put a drive together if they can get this onside kick. And the Rams have got it. And that should just about seal this one. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of an anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Oh, 
On the counter, Gurley. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. So the defense had a chance to catch their breath, and now they're back out and ready. A three-yard loss to start the drive. They'll look to make that up, and then some on second and 13. The Rams go victory formation as they take the knee. And now we're going to get a timeout here called by the defense. As the clock will stop with 37 seconds to play. So a defensive timeout, chance to regather, regroup, and get set as we resume action. So time to start going in the other direction as they come up now third and long. Time for this one final knee to put a bow on this title bout. I don't know why we did it, but we went to their final walkthrough for some reason. And what did we see? Their last play in walkthrough was taking a knee and celebrating winning a Super Bowl. They want that visualization. They did it for real. Yeah, they just scripted it out. Defense can't stop the clock. And they can watch the final seconds tick. One final try now for Brady. And it's incomplete. So their final drive comes up empty. And with that, the ball game is over. The Rams have won the Super Bowl. And they will get the Lombardi Trophy. For the victors getting to hoist that Lombardi trophy, you know, we've talked to guys that have done it, and they say there's no better feeling in sports. I don't know how there can be. The, the, the journey to get to this game is incredible. And then to finally break through and win it when all eyes are on this game alone because there's nothing else going on, that's just got to be absolutely amazing. That The task, incredible. But the accomplishment, forever. And they are the Super Bowl champs. The Lombardi Trophy is theirs, and so are bragging rights for an entire season. What a season it has been. Feels like we have been there every step of the way. Our entire crew doing a wonderful job. Thanks to my broadcast partner, Charles Davis. For all those guys, I'm Brandon Gunn signing off. We'll talk to you next season right here on EA Sports.